All right. At the end of the last lecture, I asked you to make some simple uh, predictions using this, this model of a wave coming in and uh, depositing energy in atoms that uh, eventually accumulates and pops loose some electrons, and using that, that model for understanding the photoelectric effect. So there's four uh, combinations of an experiment and a experimental parameter and a type of experiment that um, you need to consider, and we wanted to ask, you know, what are the predictions for each of these cases? Uh, what is the sort of consensus about what should happen in these cases? Um, the one that's that's sort of clearest to everybody generally is the what happens to the current, the number of electrons per second that are emitted as you increase the intensity of the the rate. Right. If you're increasing the intensity, that means you're shaking the, the electrons harder, right? You're, you're um, making a more violent oscillation. That's clearly going to dump in more energy uh, more rapidly, and that uh, would lead to an increase in the number of electrons per second, right? We predict from this model that if we're shaking the electrons more violently, they should acquire energy more quickly. That means more of them per second should be knocked loose. Okay, so the number of electrons should increase as we increase the intensity of the light. Uh, the other question we can ask is if we increase the intensity of the light, what do we expect to happen to the energy of the electrons that come out? And again, pretty much uh, clear consensus that if you're shaking things more violently, you would expect that you're dumping energy in more rapidly. Those electrons are going to acquire extra energy in that process. They're going to pick up energy so fast, they don't just come limping out. They're going to come screaming out, moving very rapidly. So we expect that we should get more electrons and electrons at higher energy as we increase the, ener as we increase the intensity of the light. Right? We shake them harder, we should get more of them, and they should be moving faster. The other uh, predictions that are having to do with changing the frequency, and that's a little harder to understand, right? Uh, the number of electrons per second that come out as you change the frequency, it's not really obvious how the frequency is going to affect that. Um, there might be some characteristic frequency associated with the atoms where, you know, if you use green light, you get tons of electrons coming out per second because it's very easy to knock them out. Uh, but it's not clear what should happen there. Right? It's not clear how the number of electrons per second should depend on the, um, on the color of the light. Uh, similarly, it's not super clear how the energy of the electrons ought to depend. Again, there might be some resonant thing where if you push it, you know, if you're shaking at exactly the right frequency, it's super easy to pop the electrons out and they come out with a lot of energy very quickly. But it's not really obvious uh, how you would determine that. And that should vary from, you know, one material to another. And, and there, there, there's lots of things going on that, that, you know, it's not easy to say what should happen. So we have this sort of grid of uh, combinations of experimental parameters and types of experimental measurements that gives us these four possibilities. Um, and our, our conclusions are, as we increase the intensity, we should get more electrons per second. As we increase the intensity, we should get higher energy electrons coming out. As we increase the frequency, we're, we're not sure what's going to happen there. And as we increase the frequency, we're not sure what's going to happen to the energy. So those are our four possibilities um, that, that, you know, we think about. Um, this is a very simple set of options, right? It's a simple set of, of things that you can look at. And so physicists started to look at it, like this guy here is Philip Lennard, who was kind of a terrible person, but uh, did uh, some really pioneering experiments that, that nailed this down and showed what actually happens in these cases. When you do these experiments and you vary these parameters, what is the thing that happens? Now, in an ordinary term, we would uh, set this up in the, a lab in ISEC, and we would have you come in and use some idealized photoelectric effect apparatus and actually measure this stuff. Um, yeah, that's not happening while this pandemic is going on. So uh, instead, we're going to have to do the next best thing. Um, I have prepared a set of fake data from this as if somebody had done this experiment really well and uh, presented a complete data set. And I'm going to put that on Nexus and share that with you. And uh, you can open that up in Google Sheets. And your next assignment will be to uh, do an activity where you open that up in Google Sheets and look at the results that come out and ask, 
are these results consistent with what we expect? Is the number of electrons per second increasing as we increase the, the intensity? Is the energy increasing as we increase the intensity? Uh, is there actually some simple behavior that's, that's happening when we do the changes in frequency? That we don't expect there to be a simple behavior, but maybe there will be. Uh, and so these are things to look at. How do all of these parameters depend on all of the different uh, properties that, that we have available? So um, that Google Sheet will be shared with you via Nexus. There will be a brief introductory video that explains sort of how to open that up, how to uh, look at the numbers, what sort of things you can do to see patterns in, in those numbers and evaluate them. And then there will be a, a quiz that asks you to put in some text descriptions of things and uh, a place for you to uh, put a, a sharing link for your results so I can look directly at the spreadsheet and any modifications you made to it. So um, after you do those things, then there'll be yet another video that gets unlocked that will uh, involve me explaining what it is that you should have seen in the spreadsheet and how all of that connects to uh, the basic physics of the photoelectric effect and how all of this ties back to Max Planck and his quantum hypothesis of a characteristic energy associated with the oscillators that uh, emit light and uh, what that has to do with the, the fundamental nature of light. So um, go do, do that activity, watch the instructional video, or don't. You can read the instructional handout if you prefer, if you're like me and don't like watching videos. Um, but uh, do that activity. That will unlock the next video, and then we'll come back here and talk about you know, what it all means. So until uh, then, uh, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you then.